H.G. Wells once wrote that crime and bad lives are a measure of the state's failure. All crime in the end is the crime of the community. And Nelson Mandela said that when a man, oh no, we did accent. No. <laughs> when a man is denied the right to live. That's good, doing it? That is actually no. really good. And Nelson Mandela said that when a man is denied the right to live the life he believes in, he has no choice but to become an outlaw. So what is crime? What are some of the worst crimes ever committed? Where are the most dangerous cities on earth? To discuss all of this and more, I'm joined by my beloved co-host, Killer, Kevin Harris. Kevin, are you okay? Do you know what does stop crime? Brand new, secure windows and doors. Do, yeah, well, I'm going <laughs> to loop into that. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, you're quite right. And we're also joined... But I'm looking for an L. What's the crime beginning with L? Uh, they're all Larceny. Like looting. Oh. Yeah. Larcenous Lissy. Larcenous Lissy. I'm also joined by Larcenous Lissy Jane. Lissy, are you okay? I'm good, thank you. You ever How done are you? a murder or anything? Oh, loads. Uh, Not that she's going to tell you about, obviously. That's loads, true. I almost caught her. Time. The FBI told me to ask you that. <laughs> uh, so, Kevin, between us, we've committed a great many crimes. Are you excited about Alleged. this episode? <laughs> You can't prove nothing. Alleged. You can't prove nothing, Fuzz. No. Oh, yeah, covered ourselves there. So, uh, before the episode starts, I just want to say thank you to Graham's Windows and Doors at grahamswindowsanddoors.co.uk, Yeovil's finest purveyor of windows, doors, and conservatories. Thank you, James. Thank you, Sherelle. We really appreciate your support. That's grahamswindowsanddoors.co.uk. Yeah, that'll stop crime. Can't break into them. Uh, Lissy, Kevin, thank you for joining me for right. this important discussion. We're going to go for crime. We've, I've gathered some very interesting facts. We're going to mm. go through the whole spectrum of crime. And Kev, this is your first time on the new look Steve Cayley show. So essentially the plan is each episode corresponds with the letter of the alphabet mm -hmm. and we should be discussing a part of the human condition. So today is C for crime. Last week was B for beauty with the brilliant Laura Smith. One of my favourite ever episodes actually. It was really great. You so, say beauty. I heard a lot about balls. There was lots of yeah, balls. But, but it could be deep <laughs> balls, couldn't it? There was a lot of ball talk. But then I just I, I was stunned that you could, you know, it's very intimate. It Male is intimate so waxing intimate. is very intimate. There's all sorts of jizz and all sorts happening when that when that mm -hmm. goes down. You know what I mean? So yeah, Merry Christmas. Special yeah. kind of guy to want that stuff. Well, hairy. You know what I mean? Maybe maybe because it is you know it is aesthetically nicer and more comfortable. I've got anxiety recently, really bad. That and part of my and for the first time, one of those anxious ticks is yanking out my own pubis. <laughs> so moving swiftly on. What is a crime, Lucy Jane? When <laughs> when you hear the word crime, what springs to mind? I was thinking about this all day, and I guess crime is perceptive to the person. It's something's happened so to, was, right? Was Jean Valjean a criminal for stealing a loaf of bread to feed his sister? That's what son? I mean. Like mm. to me, no. Do Depends we? On the you? State, exactly. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Who the fuck are you? Jean Valjean. <laughs> <laughs> I was Jean away Valjean. for a week, man. Where's Stephen? <laughs> Jean Valjean. Um, oh, damn. I would burst in a song. I'm too tired. But I'll just give you a whole fucking song. But yeah, Jean, Jean Valjean yes. from uh, Les Miserables. Uh -huh. Not um, my thing. Most recently played by Hugh Jackman in the film. Yes. Mm. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Hugh can say um, mind. So good. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's oh, a crime it's that he doesn't do it more. That is a crime. Nice. There you go. Nice. Good work. <laughs> good work. Okay, well, well. <laughs> God, you're good at this, aren't you? Yeah, pro. I try. So what do you what what do you think of? Okay, so Which I, of your many misdemeanors do you uh, no, consider? No, see, I just, like, obviously, I think the world has changed from, when we talk about misdemeanor, mm -hmm. um, that really is nothing anymore. Like, having a fist fight, stuff like that that you could get nicked for before. Mm -hmm. The level of violence that people will expose on other people over very small things because no one's afraid of the consequence of it. I see. And my favourite aspect of crime is the full life tariff because of what it means to get it in this country, which leads into some of your stuff. Like, you aren't just someone who killed someone. Mm -hmm. You are... It's a very special list. There's a, it's a veritable who's who of um, the English scumbags. See? So, yeah, Kevin, explain to us what's the difference in life sentences. OK, so from what I can understand... The, your average um, serious offence, you get 15 years. Uh, that 
well, it was what it used to be. It may have changed slightly. But uh, a full life tariff is you go to prison and you don't come out. Mm -hmm. So you have to have done a little bit more than stab someone once, or, you know, also, which is still a heinous crime. But, cool. you know, and that's your, your Yorkshire Rippers, Lucy Letby, Beverly Allett, mm -hmm. uh, Rose West. Sure. There's quite a few. There's legends of the game. Well, yeah, but there, there, you, surprisingly, there's a few women on there, which is because uh, I'm sure Steve will bust it out. But it's a diverse trade. Um, it's a little bit more favorable to male serial killing. Than it Something is like to 90% female. Yeah. of serial yeah. killers are male. Yeah. yeah, there's yeah. a lot more of us than there is but them. Something like sixty percent of victims are women. But it does go to show on a few of them. I think I can't remember his name. Didn't this not? One of them in particular was put in prison for murdering someone mm -hmm. when he was younger. Uh, rehabilitated, mm -hmm. left prison, immediately murdered someone again, <laughs> and went back inside. Some people just love murdering. Yeah. Some people just can't cope, though, like with in normal. I think life, that once you've mm -hmm. done it, like uh, accidentally killing someone yeah. is a bit different. Yeah. But if you in your head think, I'm going to do it, and you get away with it for a period of time, or even if you just do it, the f it must be like a switch in your head that you've just gone off. And now you're quite capable of doing it. You've done it once. Any mm -hmm. worry, any fear, anything is gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And once it's there, if you've gone out of your way to... If you, if you accidentally throttled Stephen because he was singing too loud in your ear and you just got a little bit happy, that's not the same. Well, Whereas kidding. if you hid in here one night because you were sick of him singing in your ear and killed him as he walked in. Do you, do you hate so me do singing? You think it's, it's due to due to like the calculation of the crime. Yes. I would like a fact about crime. Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Sweet facts, okay. And it, Does crime the broad spectrum of this, crime? Yeah, because crime uh, encompasses many things. So I want to talk about the worst crimes ever committed in Ooh. a sense, but we're not talking Stalin. We're talking just you know, street crimes, okay? Okay. So... There's a legal murder zone in Yellowstone National Park. Have you heard about this? No, that's a fantastic fact. This is a very, very interesting fact. There is a 50 square mile section in Yellowstone National Park where one can get away with murder and other crimes. So the Yellowstone National Park, like all US parks, is federal land. And if a person commits a crime there, it falls within federal jurisdiction under the Sixth, Sixth Amendment, uh, which means a person accused of a crime has the right to a jury trial. The panel must consist of residents from the state and federal district where the purported crime occurred. There are there's no one lives there. So you can't, essentially what it is, is you can't get a jury together to, and so you can't commit someone without giving him a jury of his peers. There isn't a jury because no one lives there. So in theory, there's a loophole, which means that you'll be able to get away if with crime. you thing. draw this place, if you wow. pulled up a, an aerial map of this 50 square, does it happen to be basically just a lot of trees and nothing else for 50 square miles like the middle of nowhere or well the stretch of 50 miles within yellowstone crosses parts of wyoming idaho and montana uh, if someone were to commit murder on this piece of land the crime would take place in the state of idaho but under wyoming's discretion uh, the, this portion of yellowstone is unpopulated with no potential jury members living in the area yeah so i think it's just wilderness -y, you know what i mean? do so... find american crime to be quite odd Do an here, unusual bunch? here crime is a crime and it's the same in Scotland as it is in Wales, as it is in, you know, the, you, you're the same. You commit the same crime and you're fine the same way. Whereas you can go over there and in one state have a bit of weed on you, get a slap on the wrist, go down the other and do 15 years in prison. Do you know necrophilia is still legal in 20 states? That doesn't surprise me. Sorry, necrophilia dead is, people. is having sex with corpses. So it's still technically legal in 20 states. They haven't yet uh, what brushed about, up on um, the law there. With relatives. Uh, well, you mean incest, yes. well, living relatives. Yeah, well, well yes, <laughs> yes, living. Okay. I would. Uh, uh, I don't Is know that somewhat less of a crime than dead people? Do you um, think? I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure the incest laws. Maybe we should investigate that. Lissy Jane, now, do you have any facts for us today? <clears throat> I do have a fact. That most of serial killers collect souvenirs of those That's right. mm. victims. Yes. And it, it makes so much sense. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you think about hunting, they have like trophies. The, 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 yeah, yeah, exactly. I and it's just their way of remembering I mean, and reliving. It, yeah, but like a watch, a mm -hmm. ring, and that's so personal to the families as well that you would mm -hmm. want that back, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. But they've kept them as like 
trophies and collections. Well, it's mm. the one hobby you can't go home and talk but to what? someone about. But why, though? Is that like that, proof? Know, adds to it, probably. Mm. Adds to the, because that's what you, you feel like you're part of a special club. You also, wh- you, but if you want to murder and you're part of this, I suppose you that's a huge momentous thing. Some of it's trophies. You mean like it's not just like mementos, it's, it's trophies of, wow, I did that, I planned this yeah, it, didn't yeah. It? Like, like you said, the hunter side of it. Um, I suppose I don't know that serial killers, in particular, are psychopaths. They have psychopathy. So, uh, or yeah, so they don't they don't well. feel the same things we feel. They have to imitate it sometimes in order mm. to, um, you know, get their victims nearby or, or whatever mm, it is they yeah. want to do. But who knows? I mean, people. There's literally entire jobs and professions designed, uh, you know, there mm. to yeah. study serial killers and psychopaths because they're just, just, just aliens the one thing that you're good at in your life it's, it's like, yeah, Gary Ridgway the Green Bay uh, Green River killer in America killed like 50, 80 people whatever normal truck driver guy mm. everyone's like and if to be fair if you looked at him you'd be like I reckon I'm going to take him do you know what I mean? He was a proper little yeah. weasel of a man but he physically pinned women down killed them strangled them and he did it for years like decades I believe and they eventually caught him but not once did he ever like he, he may have kept, I think they he did keep some things, but if he did that for years, um, there's no way of wording this without sounding weird. It's like a hobby, to yeah. Him. That's what I was thinking. And he like... never went home, he never talked to his wife about it, no. he never talked to his buddies at work about it. Mm-hmm. That whole the whole time, it's something you do that you do, you can only internalize. So that you literally must go home with the, the key ring that he took off the girl last week and just sit there because that's the only flashback he has, that only. Link to the thing that he did that he clearly likes doing. Hmm. I say he could be she who liked to be. No, but I was thinking that today. Like, I have traits of addictive personality. I do. Is it like that, but on a whole new level? Are you talking about your thing with like drugs and that? Your thing with drugs, your yeah. Yeah, the needles, the. I don't really want to talk about that. The needles just fill out your bag whenever you drop it. I would imagine that. No. (laughs) (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) Yes. So much fun in this one. Yeah, uh, I would imagine. Great no, not like, but just generally, like it's an addictive personality it must trait, release. isn't it? So serial killers are addicted to that. Well, can you imagine the, the hormones, the, the chemical, that's what the, I mean. the that's chemical what I mean. release from but doing that? But then having that, like, we grow up, don't we, as children, and we get certificates for reaching a milestone or whatever. Actually, mm-hmm. you get a certificate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Cheerio. then after. Hold on. No, you, <laughs> you've, start, no, you, you've, you've started something. But well, you both, you've both answered one. Because you might have answered it. She's saying the release. Mm. But if they've got psychopathy, would they? Uh, you can feel brain chemistry stuff. You can you still can feel like thrill. It still happens. But I reckon it's okay. amplified because you don't feel much of anything else emotion-wise. Oh, so, so they only get that. So you're just drawn towards That's that. That's their one feeling. Oh, also. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, well done, Lizzie. Um, good point. Very good point. So, should... Does the government... Uh, first to you, Kevin. Does the government... Do you believe that the government has a right to kill somebody, as in uh, execution? Do you think believe a criminal should be executed? Um, the, the idea is nice, the life for life and all that sort of stuff. The problem is, as is proved, because we have an example set for us across the pond, mm-hmm. they're not always right. Mm-hmm. It's not always the right so you think guy. That margin of error is enough to make. Well, it how, how many, people. especially now, there are so many people. Oh, it's happening. There's less people going in under false pretenses, mm. but 70s and 80s, 90s that have been in there a long time. Mm. There's a lot of them on the is it the Innocence Project? I think mm. there's a lot of that stuff, and quite a large portion of them, they're like, ah, there you go, DNA evidence now exists. Actually, you weren't there. This mm. guy was. And then the yeah. guy's like, damn it. So, what do you think? Ask the question again. Should do you believe that? Uh, do you believe in execution as a form of punishment? Do you believe capital severe, punishment? Do you believe severe criminals should be put to death? Again, I think it's subjective because if my children were killed by someone, you'd want it. I'd want them. Yeah, I don't, wouldn't want to work, walk on this earth if they were still. Mm-hmm. And I think you go back to this like argument of prison as well. Like they would go to prison, they mm. might get twenty five years now. But is it that bad in prison? No. In this country, I don't think so, and I just, it's subjective. Like I've had my car tires slashed in the past, mm-hmm. that's a crime, really. But would I wish that person no. 
you know, pain and suffering. No, like, no, I wouldn't. No, I was livid and I was upset and it was like I had to pay for it myself. And then, you know what I mean? It was really annoying, but there's a lot of like, I I still like, I wouldn't wish that upon someone else, like, because I do believe in karma as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of onus to prove guilt. I don't know. So, I my thought is if nowadays it's so much (laughs) your the, the margin of error is much lower because for DNA evidence, I believe yeah. that if you rape somebody or if you're a, a paedophile that has sexually assaulted a child, uh, you should immediately be put to death, I reckon. But not, but a very slow, painful torture. I like the idea of castration. Know, they do that somewhere in the world, don't they? I don't even believe, I believe that. that, like, I, I don't believe, I just think, no, I think you should be immediately, you wouldn't. Yeah. You know, oh, well, we've castrated the lion next door, so they shouldn't have any problems anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No. no yeah, I, I do. So, yeah. I, uh, do I just think that. if you if you take a woman's, if you do that to a woman or you do it to a child, you deserve instant the likelihood death. is you'll do it again. Well, it's in there. You've done it. You've got away with it. If you haven't, prison's not long enough for prison. Is not a long enough sentence for what you've taken from that child or that woman. So, death. No, no, you'd lose the right to live mm. and enjoy anything ever again. That's my that's my philosophy on that. So, who wants a fun fact about crime? <laughs> <laughs> who knew you were so harsh? So, uh, oh, so should we read a little bit more into the? Uh, is not that one either? Where the fuck's it gone? Yemen. You've you've researched the wrong town. Yeah, so <laughs> Yemen's on there. Let's talk about Yemen for a minute. So, okay, Go. okay, right. So, so it? No, don't worry. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, lovely. So, uh. Where do you think, in which country, do you think the world's most dangerous city is? I want to say somewhere in South America. Is he? Um, um, uh, Cambodia. Ooh. Care to be specific? Um, it's either Brazil, so Rio de Janeiro, or... Go on, you're too close. No. Uh, uh, it's not Mexico anymore. Is it? Really? Well, seven of the ten most dangerous cities on Earth mm. uh, with regard to murder. Yeah. So the, the places on Earth you're most likely to get murdered. Good old seven cartels. Of, <laughs> seven of those ten cities are in Mexico. Nice. Wow. The most dangerous city on Earth, um, or the city you're most likely to get murdered in, Ooh. is a place called Los Cabos. Sounds Mexico. very holiday sort it of does, sounds nice. Isn't it? Yeah. But it registers a staggering 111 murders per 100,000 people who live there. Okay. So the equivalent of so Yeovil, for example, has a population nowadays of around 50,000 people. So that's the equivalent of 50 odd people being murdered in Yeovil uh, every, every 50,000 people. Yeah. So 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 it's crazy, isn't it? What? How many people get murdered in Yeovil per year? Uh, so here's the. Uh, not very many. I think it's, it's just a couple. So, But I do have... As I raise my kids here. Here is the Yeovil Town crime statistics. Dun, dun, and dun. fun facts about Yeovil Town crimes. Yeovil. Uh, Yeovil has 110 crimes per 1,000 people that live here. Mm. Yeovil... <laughs> this, 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 this is bleak, really. I'm, I'm supposed to be the guy who... Picked yes, the, the head but, of the good whatever of Yeovil page. But yeah. I've got to be honest about what happens here in a town, okay? Uh-huh. Yeovil Good is the, the second most dangerous medium-sized town in Somerset and is among the top 20 most dangerous overall out of Somerset's 414 towns, villages and cities. Question. Wow. Yeah, what was number one? Uh, I'm not sure. This is very Yeovil-focused, but oh, I can't find you. out. Okay. The overall crime rate in Yeovil in 2023 was 110 crimes per 1,000 people. Oof. As of 2023, violent and sexual offences committed in Yeovil were on the rise, as well as shoplifting and... It just says drugs, I assume, caught in possession of... Yeah. Yeah, that sort of thing. Um, Yeovil has, a though... if it wasn't about caught. Uh, yeah. Yeovil has, though, improved in some key areas, namely criminal damage, arson... Vehicle crime and possession of weapons. Good work, everybody. Well nice. done. We're really stepping Gold star for all really of you. We're really curbing those things. Do you things. think it's the, the, the criminal damage, etc.? Do you think it's because no one can sit in the middle of the town drinking anymore because they've nothing to dug damage. it up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nothing yeah. to damage. So. But no, I'll like, look on the, the, the Thanks price. Thanks for those, side, Steve. Interesting. In fact, I did not know. Yeah. So, Yemen. <laughs> According to the United Nations, Yemen is the world's uh, has the world's worst humanitarian crisis and is currently the most uh, dangerous country on earth. 
The Global Peace Index report evaluates 163 countries on 23 indica indicators like political terror, murder rate, etc., etc., etc. In 2023, the global peace deteriorated, yada, yada, yada. Obviously, obviously Russia and Ukraine, they've broken into the top 10. Congratulations, well, well, well done, Ukraine. Good work. Head, in, head north. Um, well done. We've got, uh, so, these are the most dangerous countries on Earth, in order, from most dangerous to least. Okay. Yemen, Sudan, South Sudan. Go on in twice. Good work, everybody. Why not north? Afghanistan. It's very peaceful there. Uh, Staggered. Might be the most peaceful place on Earth. It's very weird. The most peaceful place in yeah, Sudan. Yeah, strange. Uh, <laughs> Afghanistan, Ukraine, um, Democratic Republic of Congo, Russia, Syria, Israel, Mali, Somalia, North Korea, Iraq, and so on and so forth. There's, so a, there's a, a recurring theme over a few of them, there, isn't it? There's a... A lot of them dwell in, yes, in, in, in one particular <laughs> yeah, large right. continent. Um, okay, right. Let me just see if I can plunge into more facts before we... That's a f I like I like the just the x amount of crimes per people. That's good. That's a fucking fantastic fact. Yes, these are good. Uh, okay, does anyone want serial killer facts? Brief, short serial killer. Live facts. for them. Go for it. Okay. Many serial killers experience sexually stressful events in childhood. Dr. Harold Shipman is regarded as the most prolific serial killer in modern history, with over 250 murders ascribed to him. I'm saying it like he's it's an one, like an yeah, Olympic. Yeah, yeah. Well done, <laughs> Harold. Nice work, wow. Harold. Makes you proud to be British. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Harold is so... With over 250 That's murders. There you go. Well done. That's got a better tone to it. He was a British doctor who murdered his patients. The oldest was a 93-year-old woman, and the youngest was a 41-year-old man. He hanged himself, I suppose to say, in his cell in 2004, a day before his 58th birthday. Slightly annoyed he took the coward's way out. Hey, man, Fred West. Chickens. Mm. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But be shame. Why would you do such heinous things if you're so afraid of the... Yeah, you know what I mean. Because mm. Hal Chipman was never going to be put to death. He would just been in no. Prison. I mean, you live in England. You're not. You're not going. Anywhere, so I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, but that must add to the thrill then, if you're particularly scared of. But, but he is a wildly different person to F Fred West. You've seen any of the interviews? Possibly one of the thickest mm. people. You know, very low IQ. Definitely would have been on the spectrum. The so. anti Bundy. Yes, if you will. Whereas Chipman genuinely thought he was far smarter than the people investigating him. Mm. The like. The vitriol in some of his interviews that he has for the people was well, mm. well disdain for the murders. policeman interviewing. Just yes. like he's got a success rate there. Yeah, he, I mean, he prolific. stuck to it. He was he's, he's very much the Manchester committed. City of the serial killer world. Yes, just unstoppable. Yeah, that's right. Boring but unstoppable. Oh, here's what you said earlier. Many serial killers will keep souvenirs of their crimes. For example, when Ted Bundy was asked, Do you know, this is the second episode in a row where I've talked about Ted Bundy, for the rest of the alphabet, for A through Z, shall I try and find a way to bring yeah, Ted Bundy? To talk yeah, about that's Ted the common theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Leave it as a thing and just drop that's it in That's a challenge. There. We'll see yeah. how long yeah. it takes for someone to notice. He's always fucking talking about Ted Bundy, this bloke. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Okay. Yeah. Nice work. For example, when Ted Bundy was asked why he took Polaroids of his victims, he said, when you work hard to do something, you don't want to forget it. And uh, but so souvenirs is strange. I, I do think of it as bizarre. trophies. That's what I it makes think. more sense as trophies than souvenirs. Have yeah. you seen his his the end of his trial, where the judge basically bigs him up and says it was a pleasure going back with a fourth of you. You're a very intelligent man. Is the you know normally they really go in on them and they yeah. condemn them for being yeah. old. Quite the opposite because he defends himself, doesn't he? Yeah, he yeah. Represents himself. That's how he did. He praises <coughs> Bundy. Theodore, for, yes, your wily mix. for the way he's Madison. done about it, for the way he went about it, and for the way he conducted himself, and had this like you know, had the world been different, we may have been, you know, um, uh, sort of colleagues type thing. I would have looked into that judge immediately after this. Yeah, 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 yeah. He definitely buried a body for yeah. him. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's still out there, still at large. <laughs> So. He's quite dead, I think. He was an old man then. Oh, was he? Yeah. Well, he'd been getting away with it for years. Yeah, well. Yeah. Mm. I, I have one for you, Stephen, because you're a clever man. You like this. And you are wor are you sort of worldly wise. You like your travelling. and you Do you think that the um, the way of dealing with crime in the Middle East, the lopping off of hands, stoning, and uh, do you think that's too far or acceptable? Probably efficient. <laughs> Probably low crime in those areas, but I suppose. Um, but I know I think it's because we, we see lots of people get locked up for a little things in of, Dubai yeah. now, mm -hmm. where the culture, you know, they've done. Yeah, but don't do those things there. You know no, I, mean? I agree. I, just, I just, agree. If you're going to be someone, if you're going to sit there and booze in the streets, even though you, they you, they're very, you know, the Foreign Office they they tell you before you go, 
this like, is well, what, we this is you. the culture there. Yeah, yeah this yeah, is yeah. the culture. Yeah. You don't mm. do these things that if you do, you risk getting arrested. Mm. And you go there and do them, you deserve to get arrested. Mm-hmm. How many fucking warnings do you need? Mm. It's like, you know, and we we are very possessive and protective of our cultures, and every nation on earth has a right to be protective yeah. of their culture. We seem surprised when other people yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. It just it, that, that blows my mind. Don't if you if you're not willing to to step into the shoes of the person of the culture you're in, then don't go to that place. Because yeah, yeah it, then you there's a you're Stephen Kalis world like. travel tip for you. Oh, I have one for you. Very quickly, go. You probably did the same thing I did. Mm-hmm. How did you feel? Um, being presided upon by your old science teacher. Yes. I went in there. He looked at me and went, I know you, don't I? And I was like, well, yes. He goes, well, I have to leave then. And he got up oh, and left. Well, that means he didn't fucking remember. Well, he taught me. Our me. old science teacher was a was a fellow called Mr. Thomas Peters. And then we always heard, there was always a rumour that he was a judge, but you didn't know that when you were a kid. And uh, But I learned that he was. He was my judge. Yeah. And he sentenced me to uh, countless hours of community service. Whereas he did not sentence me. He went, oh, it's you. Mm. I can't do this. And got up. He was a science teacher. Yes, he was. A, Joe, Mr. Thomas Pierce. He was a Canadian. Mm-hmm. I think he might still be alive. So we're talking about I the hope past so. tense. But he might still be kicking out there yeah. in prison. He used to ride an old Honda Silverwing from the 70s or 80s that he still had when mm. we were there. I don't know yeah. if he still had the same one when you were there. He was That's probably semi-retired. Know. But yeah, Mr. Thomas Pierce. Um, Imagine yeah, teaching the youth and then seeing your failures appear in front of you, like God damn it, oh, this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I knew you yeah. would. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That's funny. That was, uh, yeah, that was awkward actually. No. But it was, it was <laughs> off the back. <laughs> of those, yeah, it was. It's very <laughs> tense. <laughs> very tense situation. Yeah. Well, it was off the back of those community out community service where me and Josh White got very close because we were sentenced to the same amount of community hours at the same place. So we were painting train stations together. Aww. How old were you then? Uh, God, uh, after school, I reckon 16, 17, probably. Wow. Doing that. So, yeah, let's wrap it up there. So, go for it. Thank you for listening to the Steve K. The show. I really appreciate it. Uh, Lissy, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Kevin, thank you for joining us. Thank you for educating me. Yeah. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so, thank you to Graham's Windows and Doors for uh, sponsoring us. We really appreciate it. Get yourself to Graham's Windows and Doors at grahamswindowsanddoors.co.uk. Uh, oh, and remember to leave us a five star review on Spotify and click the follow button. Thanks, or everyone. we will do a crime on you. Yeah, you'll be crimed. Uh, <laughs> thanks, everyone. Really appreciate it. Uh, and ciao, ciao, ciao. Baka, baka. Oh, hi, everyone.